Well, I hope you've enjoyed singing along to the hymns again and also enjoying a time of fellowship as you've recited the Lord's Prayer together. We're also really excited to know that with the lifting of restrictions, we hope to be next week and maybe the week or the week after coming into the Aged Cares again and seeing you in person and running church services. We really are looking forward to that. Please would you now pray with me as we consider God's Word. Our Father, thank you for how we have the joy to sing great hymns of the faith, as well as having your great word. And we ask that you would help us as we consider your truth uh, today, that these words that are going to be looked at will bless our soul and help us. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's lovely having friends in your life. What do you reckon? I hope in your life you've had many good friends. Who has been a, like a best friend for you? One of my best friends when I was younger was my brother John. He's about two years younger than me. And I used to be intrigued when people thought that uh, John and I weren't very good friends because being brothers we would have been at each other and fighting each other and all that sort of thing. But we actually never experienced that. We actually got on really well. We had a, a real love for sport, had a sense of adventure, and we did lots of great things together. And yes, on the sports field, we were very competitive. We would uh, play hard against each other, and, uh, but we still respected and encouraged each other as long as I won. No, not really. <laughs> we, did, we, we really respected and honoured each other and helped each other. Now, there were times, though, with my brother, my best friend when I was younger, and he's still a best friend, when um, I didn't quite like him that well because of certain things that might happen. For example, I do remember, recall to mind, a time when we were shifting all this yellow sand from the front of our yard to the back. And we were working together and we had this little heap of yellow sand left, like a little bit of yellow sand, and my leg was not far from it. And John decided with full force to drive his shovel through that heap of sand. And so forceful was it that it carried through and hit me in the shin. I felt like I'd broken my leg and I'm thinking, what is he doing? At that very moment, I wanted to chase him and hurt him, but I was completely injured, <laughs> so I couldn't do anything. Th those moments were pretty rare for John and I, but um, yeah, I know um, no person's perfect, uh, but we still got on together really well. When I think of having friends, obviously, uh, when I met my wife Colleen, Colleen became my best friend, and John, my brother, still a, a really good friend to me. But I've got to say to you that the best friend of all has been someone else. And I'll never forget the day when I first met Jesus. Jesus is it to be our very best friend. And I love that verse, it says in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24, there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And that's because this one mentioned in Proverbs is Jesus himself. He's a faithful and loyal friend. He never will hurt us or harm us. He loves us more than we could ever imagine. And how amazing it is that Jesus can be this good friend to us. Because who are we? First of all, Jesus is God's eternal son. And even the co-creator of the universe. And to think that he can be our friend is awesome, isn't it? To think that he should love us and care for us, even though we are little dots in the universe, and even though we have sinned against God. I love looking at his life and seeing how he befriended people as he walked this earth. He befriended John, the disciple. John and the Lord Jesus had a beautiful relationship. I think of another family who he befriended, Lazarus, and his sisters Martha and Mary, and how Jesus loved Lazarus and Martha and Mary. I want to read to you an account in Luke's Gospel about another time when you see Jesus' love for somebody. In Luke chapter 5, 18 to 20, we read, And behold, some men were carrying on a bed a man who was paralysed, and they were trying to bring him in <clears throat> and to set him down in front of him. And not finding any way to bring him in because of the crowd, <clears throat> they went up on the roof and let him down through the tiles with his stretcher. How amazing is that, eh? <laughs> and, and right in the centre, they placed him in front of Jesus. Then seeing their faith, Jesus said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. Notice the, 
first word Jesus says, he calls this man friend. That's amazing, isn't it? And what a friend Jesus was to this man, this man he had never met. Jesus used his divine right to forgive him of his sins so that he could be made right with God. And Jesus used his awesome power to heal this man so that he might be able to walk again, to be healed of his paralysis. That's some friend. And as we read these accounts of Jesus, to see him befriending people and calling people friend, we need to be aware that that's how Jesus is to us too. He's alive, he rose from the dead and from heaven, he wants to befriend us. He's our friend, he's our greatest friend. He's the friend he wants, uh, he wants to befriend us, he wants us to come to him, to believe in him, to trust in him, so that we can be forgiven, so that we can be made right with God, so that we might have his blessing on our life here, so that we might join him one day in heaven. This is the great friend we have in Jesus. There's a section in Hebrews that talks also about what a friend he is to us. I'm going to read to you now from Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 to 16. It says, Since then we have a great high priest, that's the Lord Jesus, <clears throat> who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathise with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and may find grace to help in time of need. And that's not speaking of, uh, these words are not for just people back in Jesus' day. These are, these are words for us. This is who Jesus is for us. He sees us from heaven. He looks over us from the throne. And he sympathises with us. He, he knows that we have weaknesses. He knows that we fail. And he still loves us. And we can approach him. And we can come before the throne of grace and have him help us in our life. What a friend we have in Jesus. It's the best thing of all to know him as our friend, to love him and to know him. And of course, uh, we've got to sing now after speaking about this, that beautiful hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. But before we sing that, let's pray. Our Father, thank you that we can have um, good friends here on earth, human friends, friends that are, are lovely and helpful. But we know when we think of your son Jesus, we know that there is no one like him. He is far above all others. What a friend we have in Jesus. We thank you for how he came into this world because of his love for us. We thank you for how he, he touched people's lives and, and he even went to that cross for us to save us because he considers us his friends. We thank you for all that Jesus has done for us and is doing for us. Thank you that we can approach him still, that he watches over us from your throne. And we ask that you'd help us all to realise how much Jesus loves us and cares for us, that we would trust in him and believe in him and look forward to the day when we can actually join him in heaven. What a friend that he has prepared a place for us in glory. We pray that we might know the reality of these things by trusting in your Son. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your great Son. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.